Welcome to another day in the matrix. This is Waters Above. It's been another wild week in these markets. The moment the Super Bowl was over, Bitcoin did something it's never done before. So in today's video, I'm going to dive deeper into how this Super Bowl ritual is coded into these markets and how it could be revealing a very important event that could be happening on the world stage very soon. Also, just a quick update, my new Decoding Mastermind course is officially available now over on my website, watersabove.com. And if you look in the description of this video or in the pinned comment below, you'll see a special link as well as a promo code that'll be available for a limited time. So if you missed out on the pre-sale launch I was running last week, this is a chance to get this new course I just released with a discount, and since my courses are a one-time payment for lifetime access, you'll be getting in at the lowest price available right now while this promo code is active, and I'm grateful for all your continued support. I know you're going to love this new decoding course. It's absolutely my best work to date, and I've received so much incredible feedback lately that I thought to run this intro sale for those who weren't able to join the Patreon and still wanted to invest in this course. Again. I really appreciate all your support, and I know you're going to love this project. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency, technical analysis, and combine it with gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out, and make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious beings to help grow our community. And with that being said, let's take the clear pill so we need to talk about this recent super bowl with the chiefs winning this rematch from super bowl 54 which took place on february 2nd 2020 two 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 so i want you to keep in mind all of those twos and as we all remember a month after this super bowl in 2020 there was a black swan event that shut down the whole world in March 2020, specifically March 11th. Well, the 49ers lost that Super Bowl I'm referring to, and of course, they just lost again this year. And today, February 16th, actually marks a special connection that we've been talking about for some time now between now and the solar eclipse. And we have to talk about again if we're talking about the solar eclipse the connection to satoshi nakamoto's birthday so we have between february 16th today up to satoshi's 49th birthday and we're 49 days apart this is big because the 49ers just lost their second super bowl against the chiefs and the first time was in 2020, again on the 2-2 date, February 2nd. And this recent Super Bowl was the second ever Super Bowl to go into overtime. And the 49ers lost with 22 points. So you're already seeing a bunch of 22s. And today could be crucial because Bitcoin is up right now. And a lot of people are wondering, when is this rally going to end? And coincidentally, Bitcoin's kind of trapped in this 52K area for right now, at least as I record this video. There's been many four-hour candles that are continuing to get rejected around here. And I think this code is revealing itself to us, and you're going to see throughout this decode today what I mean by that. So again, if you're brand new to this channel, we've been using some of these dates uh, with pivot points, such as the upcoming Bitcoin halving, which is also in April. We have the next solar eclipse, which is in April. We tend to get big pivot points in the market on eclipses. And then we have just a couple days shy of that, this Satoshi Nakamoto mythological birthday. Of course, this is a mythological character, but we need to play the exoteric and decode it to get the esoteric. That's what we're doing here on this channel. So we have today potentially a pivot point, and we'll get to this later when we actually go into the charts and do technical analysis, but we're wondering when is this rally going to come to a conclusion. And we have some code today, and I think this 49 code to Satoshi's birthday, 49th birthday to be exact, could be very telling. Okay, so we're just going to 
quick run through with some of these twos and 22s. We have the 49ers just lost their second Super Bowl against the Chiefs. The date was the 2222 date. And this recent Super Bowl was the second ever Super Bowl to go into overtime, and the 49ers just lost with 22 points. And this recent Super Bowl was on February 11th, second month, 11th day, 2 times 11 is 22. And on February 14th, there was a mass shooting in Kansas City during the Chiefs Super Bowl parade. And at the time of that event, there was 22 victims. This number has probably updated since, but that was the official number on the day of this event. It was 22 victims. Also, regardless of all this bread and circus with sports, it's important for us to remind ourselves that people just like you and I were affected by this event if they were there. So let's show some love and respect to those who were caught up in this because I've seen several people in the so-called truther community bring up how this was a fake or staged shooting and whether it is or it isn't, people were actually injured and it's important that even though we're seeking truth here to stay compassionate in the process. And I know I have many supporters and fellow wolves over in Kansas City, so shout out to y'all and your family here. So I hope you and your families are safe. It's all love here. So getting back to this code, we have this repeating theme of twos and the master number 22 in our code. 49ers just lost with 22 points in their second Super Bowl against the Chiefs. This was the second Super Bowl to go into overtime. And right after the Super Bowl, 22 people were injured in a shooting in Kansas City during this Super Bowl parade. This was on Valentine's Day. Remember, this is Cupid. Cupid shoots the arrow shooting, all right? The main color associated with Valentine's Day is red, the main color of the Chiefs uniform, also red. And for those who watch my Year of the Dragon Decode over on Patreon, you know about the significance of this master number 22 for this year, because it's the year of the dragon. And you have your 22 in that code right there. And this Super Bowl was on the second day of the year of the dragon. This is massive information right here. I cannot stress that enough. Because the last Super Bowl the Chiefs won, following after that, there was a black swan event in March. Multiple retail banks failed. Silicon Valley Bank was the most popular on March 10th. And after the Super Bowl in February of 2022, so we have 222 when the Rams won, there was the Russia-Ukraine event. All right, and look at that 22 there. You have Ukraine giving you 22 by the code. Also 79. 79 is your 22nd prime number. So you're seeing what's going on here, right? There's a war theme. And this upcoming February 24th will be the second anniversary of that event, the Russia invading Ukraine situation. And this recent Super Bowl was a rematch from Super Bowl 54, That happened four years ago, so this upcoming March 11th will be the fourth anniversary since the start of C-19. And this recent Super Bowl was the Chiefs' fourth Super Bowl win. Of course, four is two plus two, two twos, or 22. And you see all the 22s we have, like this recent Super Bowl. So in this recent Super Bowl, the Chiefs won with 25 points, and we also see that in the code of Chiefs with 25. Coincidentally, both Biden giving you 25 and Trump in the same cipher giving you 25. And we know the elections are the current Royal Rumble on the world stage. And immediately after the Super Bowl, Joe Biden's uh, official X account posted an incredibly creepy picture of Joe with laser eyes and a caption uh, saying, just like we drew it up. And the alt image text says, dark Brandon. (laughs) Like, what are we doing here? This is clown world 3.0 confirmed. And uh, this was posted right around 11 p.m. at night in Washington, D.C., a little past the old man's bedtime. I mean, 
did he get up for a midnight diaper change and then tell one of his interns to post this insane picture? (laughs) This is just very weird considering how intentional this whole picture is and the timing of the post. And this man could barely string together a couple sentences. So getting back to the Super Bowl, Usher performed during halftime. And we also have some code with that because Usher's name is Usher Raymond. And that gives you 45 in Chaldean. Usher is 45 years old. And this current uh, event that we're talking about at the Kansas City shooting was on February 14th. And February 14th is the 45th day of the year. And when we decode, we always mirror the numbers. And the mirror of this number 45 is 54. And the first time these teams went against each other, the 49ers and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl was Super Bowl 54. And this current Super Bowl, Super Bowl LVIII or Super Bowl 58, when we write it out this way, of course, we know these are Roman numerals, but we're doing gematria right now. And we type this all out, we get 54 in gematria. And the day from the Kansas City shooting on February 14th over to the following solar eclipse that we're going to have on April 8th is 54 days. This will be the solar eclipse that forms an X over the state of Texas, the state that Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback of the Chiefs, is from. He was also the MVP in both Super Bowls. The Chiefs went against the 49ers. And he's the athlete that gets the most prana right now. And remember this 45 and 54 code is also tied into Bitcoin. We could see this right here in Gamatria with the 45 and Satoshi's mythological birthday on April 5th, the 4-5 date. And Hal Finney's birthday is May 4th. And we're going to decode this guy in a minute. So Hal Finney's birthday is just a mirror of Satoshi's birthday. This gets really interesting. For those that don't know, Hal Finney was an early player in the Bitcoin saga. He was allegedly the one that received the first Bitcoin transaction from Satoshi Nakamoto himself. Hence why some believe still to this day that Hal is Satoshi. Now, this is where it gets mind blowing because Hal Finney, going by this name popularly, exoterically, Hal Finney equals 49 in Gamatria, also the mirror number of 94. And we're approaching Satoshi's 49th birthday in April. And the 49ers just lost this Super Bowl. Hal Finney tragically died quite early, actually, in life. Hal Finney died at 58 years old. And we just had Super Bowl 58. Hal Finney, who died at 58, was born in California, just like the 49ers, tied directly to Bitcoin. So I thought about this connection to the number 49 with this Hal Finney decode, as you can see. And if we take from the date of this Kansas City shooting, which is, a again, the unfortunate ritual but could be very revealing as a pivot point of energy, specifically because it was on Valentine's Day, a day of love and positivity and All of the happy energy is pent up for that day. Well, it was quite the opposite for the team that won the Super Bowl. There's a tragedy, actually. So you see how they're playing with the energy here. This is why I'm going to start using this date now for some of our decodes, because I feel like it's a significant event. So we're taking from this day, and we're going to move it all the way over to the 94th day of the year. And this is going to land us on April 3rd. So we're using 49, we're using 94, and this again tied back to Hal Finney's Gamatria. You could see both dates share the same date numerology of 15. Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback of the Chiefs, wears number 15, just a side note. And this date of April 3rd internationally would be wrote 3-4, just like Hal Finney in Chaldean equals 3-4. So anything tied to early April is incredibly important considering the power of these solar eclipses during a solar cycle, which we're in right now. As mentioned earlier, we have this solar eclipse on April 8th, a couple days 
before Satoshi, oh, sorry, a couple days after Satoshi's 49th birthday, which is just a couple days after this date that we've discovered of April 3rd. It's a powerful week for us. So while I was decoding Hal Finney, I thought to look into his death date, which is right here of August 28th, 2014. And I wanted to kind of tie this into the main code of that number 58, considering how Finney was 58 when he died, and we just had Super Bowl 58. So let's go over to the 58th day of this year. And that's going to be February 27th. And we're going to tie this to the day after Hal Finney died of 2014. So this is going to get a little bit deep, but I think that this is revealing something big. And I also, again, took into consideration this key number of 58. Super Bowl 58, Hal Finney died at 58. And I took these two dates of last, so the day that Hal Finney is no longer with us, all over to right now. This very powerful year for Bitcoin. And we have 3,469. And this number, 3,469, is the 487th prime number, which is the 93rd prime number. And this 93 is incredibly important for crypto. I cannot stress that enough because this 93 is the mythology of Satoshi, the creator of crypto, father blockchain, who is the mythology of Saturn. And you're going to see that 93. So whenever I have a 93 connection, I know it's powerful for Bitcoin because of this mythological story that's playing out on the world stage. And many speculate Hal Finney was Satoshi. And note these 21s in Saturn. Well, if I take Hal Finney's full name, Harold Thomas Finney the second, we're going to get 73 in Chaldean, and 73 is the 21st prime number. Again, tied back to Saturn. 21s just like there's 21 million bitcoin in supply and like hal finney's full name equals 73 the 21st prime well this date that i discovered of february 27th is a 73 double digit date numerology and this is so synced because the following day after it would be going into the nine years and six months time frame nine six since Hal Finney passed away. During this leap year, Satoshi's mythological birthday actually lands on the 96th day of this year, as you can see. And these two dates of February 28th to Satoshi's birthday on April 5th, we're going to show you really quickly how this is all tied together. 2024. So we have from the end of this month to Satoshi's next birthday, 37 days apart, 307 days left in the year. You remove the zero, you have the 37 code again, and this 37 is three sevens, seven, seven, seven. That's 21, or your jackpot number. That 21, again, ties back to Saturn 21. Saturn is also called the Grim Reaper. That's Patrick Mahomes' nickname the quarterback for the Chiefs. This was a code I talked about last year, actually, in regards to Super Bowl 57, when the Chiefs went against the Eagles, where the total score of both teams combined was 73 points. And I showed you just a moment ago how that's tied back to Saturn. 73 is the 21st prime number, and Saturn is tied directly to Patrick Mahomes. On purpose, all of his Super Bowl victories were around... Saturn years. And what I mean by that is the Shemitah year, which is a seven-year cycle, and the Jubilee, which is a 50-year cycle. So it's interesting how the last time before they won their Super Bowl against the 49ers for the first time was 50 years before that in 1969. How crazy is that, that it took them 50 years to win a Super Bowl, and then now all of a sudden, around our Jubilee, They've won a total of three Super Bowls recently. Just think about this. 
and their last Super Bowl that they won before that before that reign was 50 years ago. We also had another 50-year cycle of between the Yom Kippur War and the recent war that started in Israel. You can see the power of this 50-year cycle. And this is perfect because the Jubilee is on seven cycles of the seven-year Shemitah, the sabbatical year, which would be seven times seven is 49, like the 49ers. And on the 50th year is Biblical Jubilee. And the Chiefs won the Super Bowl before the year of the Shemitah in 2020, leading into 2021, then just won again now, the year after the Jubilee year, as above, so below. This would have almost no significance, by the way, if it was all just coincidence, it could be, but the fact that it took them 50 years to win a Super Bowl, and then they happened to win the Super Bowl before the 49th year Shemitah, and after the Jubilee, both times against the 49ers, well, that right there is called a script. And all of this code pointing to the end of this month, and considering we've had a track record of Black Swan events after a Super Bowl, as explained earlier with the C-19 ritual after the Chiefs beating the 49ers in Super Bowl 54, then the Russia-Ukraine invasion in 2022 after the Super Bowl, then last year a retail banking crisis on March 10th, the day before the C-19 date of March 11th. On March 10th last year, Silicon Valley Bank failed, again tied to California, like the 49ers. California is getting ritualized a lot lately. and. One key thing to note was the dot-com bubble. If you look into that, you can see right here in this data, it peaked on March 10th, 2000, which was also during the Chinese Year of the Dragon, which we're in the Year of the Dragon now. So since we had the 49ers lose against the Chiefs back in 2020, followed by a Black Swan event in March, we have this sequence of Black Swan events lately happening after the Super Bowl. The question is, Will we get a Black Swan event next month, considering the Chiefs beat the 49ers again in this rematch? Especially since we already had a negative event tied to the Super Bowl with the shooting at the Kansas City uh, Chiefs parade. It's also very interesting how the old flag of Kansas City actually looks like the French, the, the flag of France. And we know the next Olympics is in Paris, France. We've been decoding this for years now in preparation for this moment. So that's another layer to all of this that could definitely be significant for what's to come. If you were to look at the Missouri flag, kind of looks like the flag of the Netherlands. But this was a flag of the city of Kansas City right into about maybe a year to two years ago, right around the last Super Bowl, actually. And uh, now it's changed over to this one, but this is the one they had literally the flag of France and the Baphomet head, you know, this, this Ram's head. <laughs> They're clearly showing you what this is all about. It's pointing towards war, Ram, Aries, the Ram, Mars, God of war. That's what this is all about. And that's why they did a shooting ritual on Valentine's day, the day Cupid shoots the arrow, arrow, it's Eros. So there's a lot of rituals that are going to play out on the world stage, and they already gave us all the ingredients we need to decode it. So now let's head over into the charts and see what's going on in Bitcoin since we had our first daily close above the golden pocket in the fastest time we've ever accomplished such a move, a move that usually takes five to six months or even longer in the example of 2019 and 2020 where it took over a year for this move to play out, well, Bitcoin just did it in 74 days, a little bit over two months, the quickest it's ever done it, actually two, over two times faster than it did it in the quickest example, which was in 2012. So here we are. This is pretty incredible to watch, and it's precarious. From the day closing into this golden pocket territory in the regarding a macro candle close and then the day closing outside of it it literally took us 74 days and the day that this happened was on valentine's day the day of the kansas city shooting rituals across the board that day and that number 74 is very powerful can't really get into it right now because i want to stay on track with this video but 
What we have right here in this chart is a parallel channel that's been in play now for 600 days and it's held a support for over 450. And the times we traded on this support actually look nearly identical where we have a correction and then give or take about 60 trading days on this support line in both of these scenarios. Measuring from the correction date right here to the recovery dates. We'll call it two months. The space between retesting this support is somewhere around eight months or 240 to 250 days. And if I was to align this recent test zone of the support, it would be taking us to around late May or the June timeframe. So think about June. And you've heard me say this many, many times throughout my last maybe 10 videos about June of 2024 because it's two months after the halving. And that's around a time frame where we tend to kind of do our final, final, final lows or boring trading before things get very exciting. Well, lately things have just been overly exciting way too early and very it, it, not in a sustainable fashion either. So let's get back to this. I just wanted to share that we do have a parallel channel that's forming. And as of today, we are at its resistance. It is still in play for over 600 days. And I'm not saying that we can't break above it because Bitcoin has been doing a lot of firsts lately. <laughs> we also know we have the ETF narrative. That's been what every bull wants to talk about as the reason why we're doing what we're doing right now. And sure, if that's the case, great. But these seem like traps to me because I'm not entirely sure why the most wealthy institutions on earth would want to be buying Bitcoin above 50,000 right now. It just does not make any sense to me. Anyways, getting back to this, we have this fractal of about 60 days of trading at the support, the same uh, identical fractal about 60 days trading at support, and taking about eight months to retest. If I was to take eight months out from this area and put it into the future, it would be about the June time frame. And if this support uh, at that time would be to, would be retested, that actually puts us around 39k to 40k Bitcoin essentially at the bottom of this golden pocket. This would be like a shorter time frame double bottom and continuation to the upside into July. Now, considering we've brought up a potential March black swan, at, and for years now, I've been warning about the date of April 15th of 2024, and this would be around the solar eclipse that's coming up, and both of our solar eclipses, we saw a 20% correction for Bitcoin. We had the solar eclipse over here of April 12th, and from this microcycle top to this correction right there was about a 20% correction. And from this July top over here, leading into the following solar eclipse, which was in October, that was a 20% correction. Both very healthy pullbacks and necessary. And right now, this Bitcoin chart is getting incredibly overheated, and it would be healthy for Bitcoin to chill out, build some structure, Otherwise, if it just wants to keep going up now, well, then that'll be a very short and sweet bull run. And that's not what you want, honestly, because bigger pumps means bigger dumps. So if we look to the March and April time frame around this support zone, that would be somewhere between 34K Bitcoin and 36K. A pullback down to that level would be incredibly healthy for Bitcoin right now. And any 20 to 30 percent correction at this time would be normal especially leading into the halving and based on Bitcoin's prior performance. We know, for instance, in this cycle over here of this 2016 moment, and let me turn off all of this noise so you can just see where I'm coming from here. Pretty much when we started this breakout, every one of these dips here was a 30 to 40% correction along the way, even after we broke into price discovery. So that's healthy in Bitcoin world. And right now, we've only had 20% corrections along the way. And I suppose the market maker has this all mapped out. They know that a 20% correction will liquidate X amount of people, and that's probably good enough for them. But I think we're in the cards now for something that's a little bit more dramatic of a shakeout just because of how early we're so bullish based in prior cycles. So if we think about the halving and where we are right now, I've shown in 
past videos how around every halving Bitcoin is trading either within the macro golden pocket or it's right below it in the case of 2020. It would have been in the golden pocket if it wasn't for that black swan event in 2020, but let's just call it within the golden pocket. And we're there right now, and it's mid-February, and the halving is in about two months. So we're on schedule with that, but we're breaking out right now in a bullish fashion a little bit too soon. And around the halving, Bitcoin tends to be actually quite sideways and low volatility. So let me show you what I mean by this. I'm going to be pulling up, and we have these blue lines across the screen those are the halvings i'm going to zoom in right now and you can see to the left and to the right we're quite sideways we're not yet parabolic around the halving phase over here in the following example you can see we actually had a kind of yin yang as above so below dump it almost looked identical the way the dump was to the pump that came in slightly before it this is kind of what we're doing right now actually we're pumping hard into the halving um and we can see that couple days shy of the having about three weeks we did get a pretty substantial correction on this extremely bullish move up and it was about a 30 percent pullback stalled out at the golden pocket at the bottom of the golden pocket the macro 618 and we held that level and i just want to show you how long we were trading in this level for before uh, we really recovered it took about 100 days or so before we remained on the uptrend Right now, I think it makes the most sense that this should be coming to a conclusion soon regarding this Bitcoin pump. It would be very weird for it to just keep going up now and retest all-time highs. So if we were to look at how long it takes after this halving to stabilize, it was about 50 days in 50 to 60 days in most cases. In this example here, it took a little bit longer, but still you can see around this 50 to 60 day mark, we start the recovery energy. Well, if we were to think about that today, based off of the predicted having somewhere around the 20th, 50 days out would be June. Again, I put emphasis on this. We brought it up at the start of our analysis, June. And when I say sideways, I'd assume we're probably trading uh, at this parallel channel support zone that I called out earlier. If we're going to remain on this parallel channel for a while now. It would make the most sense for us to be trading around this and having this sort of higher lows uptrend even after a correction just like we did back at the end of 2022 and here in the september the fall time of 2023 that would be the may june into july time frame it'll still be bullish regardless and around 40k now since i keep bringing up 40k let's go to the cme chart because bitcoin does have a cme gap at 40k right down here and it's hard to see but if you go on the 55 minute chart or the hour chart you will see in fact the gap right over here and it formed around january 23rd so if we were to have a pullback to just fill that gap that would be healthy enough now I know people want bigger pullbacks. Everyone either is a mega bull right now or a mega bear in either direction. That's kind of where we're at in this phase of the cycle. We're starting to see polarization, which is a good thing. <laughs> That's how you shake out the most people is you make the market very polarizing when you could be a wolf and be neutral and not be a bull or a bear like everyone has become out of nowhere. So I have the CME gap at 40. I've shown you this parallel channel that's been in play for 600 days, again, aligning with this post having a uh, time frame somewhere around 40K. And uh, this aligns really nicely for a healthy pullback and a deserved pullback. This is a little too dramatic right now. Let's go over to XRP because I believe XRP has essentially hit 58 cents and this 58 number is big for xrp because it's in gamatria of xrp we have that 58 and think about how we just had the 58th super bowl so let me go over to this chart right here because we have a major rejection <clears throat> after gravitating up to this trend line again and again and again we continue to stall out at it and it's a trend line that's essentially been in play now for a little over 200 days but i want to show you something real quick i'm going to switch over to the weekly chart i'm going to turn this into area and you'll see how important this support trend line is at the bottom we bring this up a lot but i just want to show you where this comes into play last cycle's automatic rally 
where we broke above and entered price discovery, where we've returned back to at the end of the cycle in 2020. This is the C19 crash. After our mid-cycle rally in alt season of 2021, came back to it, and since it's been a perfect support, even recently, we held the weekly close into the monthly close of January. XRP is coiling up in this zone, and as it builds this kind of energy, it's ready to pop. So I am expecting this breakout very soon, actually, because we're getting closer and closer to the apex of this pattern. And the timing of this is perfectly aligned for this grand trial of this SEC versus Ripple case on April 23rd, which is coincidentally right around the same exact time of the Bitcoin halving. How interesting. So this is why I've loaded up on XRP in anticipation for this isolated event tied directly to XRP. It seems by mid-March is when this will start becoming noticeable. And it could very well align with what happened in March and April of 2017. What happened right here? when XRP broke out over a two-week period into early April. This could be what happens this time, tied to this SEC case, due to speculation over how the turnout of this case will go. I actually don't think this type of move is going to happen after the case. It's likely to happen before it. And if we look at what Bitcoin was doing around March 23rd into April 2nd, I just want to pull that up really quickly so you can see for a comparison. We're going to go to late March... Of 2017 turn off all this noise boom it was this fractal here you see the difference Bitcoin actually had about a 20% correction <laughs> over the time that XRP was up 75% so you can see we can have an isolated event happening for XRP, and it wouldn't matter what Bitcoin is doing at the time. We could even have Bitcoin correct 20% into this upcoming halving, while XRP pumps over 70% into the halving. Of course, the halving is an isolated event for Bitcoin, and we know we have this grand trial for Ripple as an isolated event for XRP. And evidence in the past charts shows this type of move is possible. We even have a very recent piece of evidence for this with what happened back here in July, where essentially we had a 70% move for XRP while Bitcoin was sideways. Bitcoin was barely doing anything at this time. If anything, it's better if Bitcoin sideways. This way, liquidity could roll into the altcoins. So this is big for XRP. For those that invest in XRP, considering it's my second biggest position, I'm definitely preparing myself for this move. And if we get any pullbacks between now and then, I will absolutely be taking advantage of that. I'm not going to change my stance whatsoever. And we could have a retest of this peak that we got in July of 2023 in a single trading day, just like we had back in July, once we get more updates on this current case. And I think that it would make the most sense for this move to happen probably around the lunar eclipse of next month. And we also have a technical pattern. We're getting closer to this apex. It's coiling up. It is ready for a breakout. And even if Bitcoin was to retest right now and have a 20 to 30 percent correction, it seems that this major support line will hold. So that's the update for today. Again, I appreciate every single one of you. I hope you're all having a beautiful week in the matrix. I'll be catching some of you tomorrow in the live stream. And if you head over to my website, watersabove.com, this new decoding mastermind course is available now and you'll have a promo code here at the top. Definitely click that and check it out. And I appreciate and I'm grateful for all of your continued support. Wishing you all a beautiful rest of your day in the matrix. Much love.